let's have a look at deploying a virtual machine with System Center. So you can see on my local hard disk here, I've got a VHD file, and in Virtual Machine Manager, if I look at the library on my local machine and look at the VHD files, this one at the bottom, when I go to its properties, has a path that takes me to the shared folder where that particular file lives. I've said what version of the operating system it's in and what virtualization platform it targets and I've given it a name. Virtual hard disks aren't the only thing I can put in the library. So here I've got a hardware profile. Uh, you can see it's called Toprocessor Standard and on the hardware settings tab I've defined everything I need for this virtual machine. One clever thing that VMM does is it works out the networks that are attached to virtualization hosts and allows you to choose one of those networks as the target where you're going to attach your virtual machines network. Now another thing stored in the library is a set of settings for the guest operating system. So you can see I've defined this operating system and given it a name uh, I've specified the local administrator password and I've entered a product key. Now we do publish some product keys which are designed to complete an installation and be replaced later and I'm just highlighting here the URL where you can get this list of keys and I put one of those keys in, selected a time zone, specifying here which version of the operating system I need to install and then I can say it's going to be a member of a domain. Now, don't do what I'm doing here and use the administrator as your uh, user account. Use an account that's been set up specially for the purpose. And I can customize the installation as you can see with the settings on the left there. With these things in place, I can now create a template for building new virtual machines. So I'm going to go to my hard disk and say create a new template around this hard disk. I'm going to give that template a name and now I can choose a hardware profile. So I'm going to use the, my existing hardware profile rather than making one up. And You can see it's added the disk in here to be the default disk on this machine. Otherwise it's exactly the same as the hardware profile I had before. Go to next. Again I can choose a set of operating system settings but I'm going to choose to use those pre-configured ones just to make my life that bit easier. So I can use these in multiple templates and I can customize them if I want to within this template but I'm going to stick with the defaults and you can see I can have a look at the PowerShell script that will do this but this will just create a little job to run as a background task and set up that template. So with my template in place I can create a new virtual machine based on that template. So let's go and do just that. So I'm going to create a new virtual machine, give it a name, and then I have the option to customize the hardware profile, but I'm going to go exactly with the one in the template. Same with the operating system settings. I can customize it, but I'm just going to stick with what's in the template. And I can either store this in the library or place it straight on a virtualization host. Well, here I haven't got the option to put it in a library. So I'm going to choose that host, choose where the files are going to go on that host, and choose an adapter on that host that actually lets me connect to that network that we saw being recognized earlier on. So only that particular network is going to be valid for connecting to that network. Now what I want to do as far as startup options are concerned for the VM, well I'm going to go with the standard ones. And again, button to look at the PowerShell script here, quick summary, and I'm going to say start the VM when you finish creating it. So this again will set up a background job of multiple steps. So the first task is to set up the new virtual machine on the virtualization host. And then we have to push the VHD file out to that host to run the virtual machine. Now if we switch screens and look at the virtualization host, a quick refresh just shows that the uh, 
machine's been created and what I'm going to do is just connect to that virtual machine so we can see what's happening on its screen and I'm also going to run task manager so I can see the network traffic of the file being copied across so we're going to let that run and in fact we're just going to speed the process up a little bit so when we come back to virtual machine manager you can see the uh, the clock will jump a little bit and we've now finished copying the file over so the files now in place on the on the virtualization host so let's go over to the virtualization host and see what's happening there you can see from the tracing task manager the file copy stopped and we've just got a little jag of information there as the agent on the host talks to the SCVMM server now it's been instructed to start the virtual machine so that's what's happening and the machine's going to boot up as if it was being booted for the first time which it is it's going to install the integration components and then immediately shut down and that's what you can see happening here so if we go back to uh, SCVMM's console what you'll see in the SCVMM console is the part of the task for installing the components is completed including starting and stopping the virtual machine and now we're going to customize it with a floppy disk virtual machine manager creates a virtual floppy disk with the customization information on it transfers that virtual floppy disk over to the virtualization host attaches that to the virtual machine and when the virtual machine boots up it will apply the settings in that floppy disk to the operating system so it's coming up now applying the settings and when it gets to log in at the end of this process basically that's job done so we can come back to SCVMM and we can just see the job finishing off you can see that it's taken just a shade over 10 minutes to deploy this VM from beginning to end and at the top of the screen here you can also see we've got a history of past jobs so we can go back and refer to this or any others if we need to so here's my virtual machine showing up in virtual machine manager can't see the preview of it because I've got the VM connect just saying about jobs we can get a breakdown of how successful jobs have been over time just one final thing to show you back at the newly deployed virtual machine uh, I just wanted to show that it really is joined to the Contoso domain and it really is the machine that I said it was so you can see it's logging me onto Contoso and there's the local machine name